and welcome to CI Mender 5. My name is John Weezy, and in this episode, which might take a little bit more than five minutes, I'm going to explain some of the intricacies of bringing data into customer insights from the Microsoft Dataverse or from Dynamics. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. Uh, the, the most obvious way is to use this Microsoft Dataverse uh, direct connection. This allows you to basically pick the entities you want from Dataverse and that's it. Now, the benefit to this is that we don't actually copy all that data into Customer Insights is uh, the data lake that Customer Insights uses. We only open it up, connect to it, bring it into memory when we need it, um, but we don't actually create a separate copy of it. Uh, so it's a little bit faster. It's a better option when you have a lot of data uh, as opposed to, say, using the Power Query and using the Dataverse Connector, which allows you to do transformations and things on the data. Uh, because what happens there is we actually go through all those transformations that you apply, and then we bring the resulting data set over into the Customer Insights data store, um, uh, where we can then use it for everything. So that requires us to go out and do an update every so often based on the settings that you set up and create that latest record set to use. Um, it does have the benefit of allowing you to do transformations, um, which is key to some of the data that you might be bringing in from Dynamics. So if, if you've ever done uh, this today, you probably have run into maybe some of the issues um, that we presently have when bringing data in. The, the most common is that if you have a field that has carriage returns in it um, or some other special characters, but primarily carriage returns, um, you can run into issues importing data from Dataverse. And they usually manifest themselves in telling you that you have corrupt records. Um, now, the easiest way to figure out uh, where you have that is when you get that error, going into the entities and finding a corrupt record in the system section. So in six system, you will have something that says like D365 data, since that's what I called my data source, and then underscore passengers, underscore corrupt uh, I forget what it's called, but corrupt entities or something like that. When you open that, you might be able to figure out from there where the corruption is happening because you may be able to go into the data and see it showing up. Um, usually if there's a carriage return in a field, uh, the data will look goofy. Like you'll have contact ID, alternate email address. Let's say email address has um, a carriage return in it. Any fields after that would show up on the next line as if it was a new row. So carriage returns obviously are putting a new line into the into the data. Um, so the system thinks that's an entirely new row um, as opposed to the same row with uh, that value being part of a column. So how do you fix that? Well, there's a couple of ways you can fix it. Um, the easiest way is to um, go in and make sure that you're not bringing those columns in if you don't need them. Um, but of course, if you need them, uh, you'll have to do a little bit more work. So let me just swap over here into Dynamics and just show you uh, briefly. So here you see I have the address field in this contact card. This is one of those composite fields. So here I have address. It's taking the address line one, and if I had an address line two, that would be here, the city, the state, the zip, and the country. And it's combining those into one field. Now in Dynamics, those are composite fields. So if you're in Dynamics, um, one of the things you can do is you could go ahead and you could export uh, the contacts to Excel, look in Excel, and in Excel you can uh, do little tricks like expanding the rows and columns and seeing where you have carriage returns. Um, but as I said, typically this is the composite field that is the issue. So uh, in Customer Insights, what I would recommend is if you're bringing in data and you are not going to bring in uh, the contact information, you could use Dataverse. You could also use Dataverse if you're going to bring in the contact information. So what I've done in the past is I've used this Dataverse connector, brought in all of the tables that don't have issues using this, and then created a separate connection um, for the tables that have issues like the composite fields. And in that, those cases, um, what I've done is do this. So I use the Dataverse Power Query Connector. And then I go ahead and I select just the columns that I need uh, so that I'm not bringing those in. Uh, and I'm going to do a little trick here and switch this over to the entity uh, 
uh, view instead of the attribute or to the attribute view instead of the data view. So it's not bringing in all the data. So, um, so you can see here what I've done is I've gone ahead in this particular one and said to choose columns. And I've only picked the columns that I need. Now, if you need the composite column for some reason, you could bring that in and you could use the replace values on that column and you could replace the carriage returns with, uh, say, a space or a comma or whatever it is that you want to use. Uh, so that's one way you can bring those composite columns over and still have them if you need them. But again, those composite columns are really just other columns like address line one, which you see here, city, state, and all that, which you have individually. So if you don't need the composites, my recommendation is don't bring them in. You also have a lot of other data in here that you don't need, um, including uh, lookup tables and all this stuff. So in, you can see here in this particular instance for contact, I'm not bringing most of the tables or data over, which helps uh, in the data load. And if I go ahead and search for composite, you'll see that I have these three uh, columns that come in by default that I'm not going to bring over, which are those composite fields that have carriage returns in them. So by not bringing them in, I don't have the corrupt records. The data comes in just fine and I'm able to use the Dynamics data in Customer Insights. Now, one other thing I'll mention as a, a, a little gotcha here. If in Dynamics you want to add that Customer Card add-in that we have, um, that Customer Insights has. I've done a video on this, um, but there is a little gotcha that you need to be aware of um, now that prevents the data from showing up here. So if you've set everything up correctly following my other video, um, but you're getting the customer can't be found, no data to show error in your customer contact card um, add-in, the most likely issue is that you're running into this little problem we have with the contact ID and the, the case of it. So I'm going to switch back to data view here so that you can see. The contact ID is a GUID, and on the customer uh, I'm sorry, on the dynamic side, it's all lowercase like you see here. But when you use Power Query to bring it in, Power Query likes to um, change it. Now I'm going to remove the step that I added here so that you can see this. Power Query brings it in as uppercase characters. So all my, all my letters are uppercase. And when it tries to do the match, it's actually a case-sensitive match on the dynamic side. So it doesn't find the contact. So the thing that you need to do here is you need to transform the column, do a text transform to lowercase. And that will then make sure that when you export segments to Dynamics or when you are using the customer card add-in, that you get a match between your customers in Dynamics and that data that you brought over here uh, so that you see everything. So those are a couple of tips there on bringing data from customer from Dynamics and Dataverse into Customer Insights. Hope you enjoyed this episode and tune in again next time.